The inquiry has called 84 witnesses, had 49 witness statements read in, 145 exhibits tendered, and compiled over 4,000 transcript pages. The inquiry received telephone calls or emails from no less than 147 members of the public providing information. Much of that information led to the inquiry being able to contact additional members of the public who in turn were able to assist the inquiry with its various investigations. As Council assisting, I have recommended to you, sir, that 11 persons have a total of 24 adverse findings made against them. The sexual abuse at St Christopher's Hardy House and the Narragin Hostel certainly did not cover the breadth and scope of the offending at St Andrews in Catanning by Dennis McKenna. He was a warden who clearly displayed the three characteristics of a child sexual abuser that have been identified in the literature. He groomed the students he was supposed to take care of. He groomed the community of Catanning to the point that he was adulated. And it was his own evidence that established the third characteristic, which the clinical psychologist, Rosemary Kant, described as self-grooming. She defined self-grooming as a rationalisation by the offender to justify his behaviour to himself. And when I asked Dennis McKenna, when he gave evidence, transcript page 1208, are you saying that by their demeanour, as you sexually abused them, they appeared happy to you? He answered, yes. That sickening response was one that without doubt remains etched in the memories of those in the hearing room who had the misfortune of hearing it. When the inquiry commenced its investigation six months ago, we knew from the very start that we would uh, have a great deal of difficulty in gathering the necessary evidence. The events in question occurred between 20 and 35 years ago, and it could be expected that many potential witnesses would have died or have become senile in the intervening period. Even with those witnesses who had full possession of their faculties, it could be expected that they would have had problems in accurately remembering everything that had happened so many years ago. I have previously described the task which the inquiry faced at the beginning as putting together a giant jigsaw puzzle with many of the pieces missing. So the job we set out to do was to find all of the missing pieces of information. Although we did encounter the expected difficulties in accomplishing this task, I'm glad to say that we have been largely successful in uncovering the truth of what happened. The third and most important contributing factor to the progress made is the cooperation we have received from members of the public. A remarkable number of publicly spirited individuals have come forward with pieces of information for the inquiry. Some of this information has been very valuable and in effect has provided the inquiry with missing pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. The media has played an important role in encouraging the public to come forward and for that I thank the media profusely. My report will contain specific findings as to why Dennis McKenna was able to continue his offending for such a long period of time. The report will also recommend some legislative and policy changes designed to safeguard children in school hostels and residential facilities from similar serial offending in the future. In conclusion, I thank everyone associated with the inquiry for helping it to complete its task. That includes not only members of the public and others I have mentioned, but also all council who have appeared before me, as well as the transcript and technical staff behind the scenes who have made our hearings run so smoothly.